Aaron Dykes here for Infowars.com. We've got to ask ourselves, why are the feds preparing for a war against Americans? Why have they bought now more than 2 billion bullets, all kinds of arms and ammunition, and now more than 2,700 tanks to patrol in America and keep order? We're told it's because they love us. We're told it's to keep the peace and to increase safety. But of course, we also know from Army documents, from Homeland Security reports, and a lot of other information that it's really to occupy America and prepare for a civil unrest and a total economic collapse that will include gun confiscation. Gun confiscation is exactly what happened during the state of emergency following Hurricane Katrina in New Orleans. Now the founders who set up the Constitution and Bill of Rights did not want a standing army because they knew history and they knew that over and over again that's how power corrupts and takes over societies. At the same time, they were concerned about historical examples like the Shays Rebellion that happened after the years of the Revolution but before the Constitution where soldiers who weren't paid formed mobs to try to take over the government. So they put in the possibility for the army to be used domestically for only one purpose and that's to put down insurrections. This was strictly through things like Posse Comitatus from 1878, strictly forbidding military from working with police or doing domestic operations. But that has whittled away in recent years, and there's been a concerted effort to do away with Posse Comitatus altogether and to take away the state's power over troops and National Guards and put all the power in the hands of the feds, Homeland Security, and the Department of Defense. We've of course seen how the military has been drilling, preparing, and training to take on Americans, put them in internment camps, and otherwise occupy the domestic sphere of society. Alex documented it as early as his Police State 2000 film and in many of his other films. Here's a short clip where Americans come to checkpoints and beg for help from the military. But it's in no way limited to the things that Alex has just put in his films. This has been an ongoing effort that has been accelerating. Uh, David Knight did a special report just a few weeks ago documenting only a few of the recent urban warfare drills, many of which included helicopters firing simulated live rounds over major American cities. They include Houston, Miami, Minneapolis, St. Louis, Chicago, Los Angeles, and other locales. Well, let's take a look at some of these recent drills. January the 28th in Houston. The helicopters and the sound of gunfire created a lot of concern this afternoon in one Houston neighborhood. And an Army major who was out here wouldn't tell us exactly what kind of training they were doing. Miami, four days earlier, January the 24th, 2013. Still, if you've seen one of these drills, it really is like a scene out of one of those action movies, choppers stalking the sky of downtown Miami. It's a joint military training exercise. And here's another one in Minneapolis, August 28, 2012. If you see military helicopters flying low over Minneapolis, do not be alarmed. They are training in an urban environment. Here's another one. St. Louis, July 3rd, 2012. It's a military mission in North St. Louis. Heavily armored vehicles are rolling into town, and while they come in peace, there are all kinds of rumors about why they are here. Chicago, April 17, 2012. A pretty scary scene along the Chicago River turns out to be a military training exercise. Los Angeles in January the 26th, 2012. Special Military Operation Forces in conjunction with the LAPD conducting some military maneuvers. Of course, in the 2010 film Police State 4, The Rise of FEMA, Rob Dew, Alex Jones, and the other filmmakers covered the example of Arcadia, Iowa, where the National Guard practiced cordon and search drills in neighborhoods to specifically take on gun dealers to find, quote, weapons caches. And Alex interviewed the officer who was in charge of the drill. They were admittedly doing it for domestic purposes inside the United States, and we should really ask ourselves why. It says in this article, going door to door, asking if they can search homes looking for weapons. Uh, it's actually a, a planned training event uh, to provide uh, our soldiers with greater proficiency at what we call cordon and search. 
uh, which is a mission that, um, um, just for a little background, we've deployed nearly 13,000 members of the Iowa National Guard in the global war on terror, and then actually search for caches of weapons or other kinds of contraband which could harm um, American forces. And other like forces Fallujah, forces. what we saw in Correct. Fallujah. Mm-hmm. Correct. And then you have manuals like FM 3-39.40, specifically about internment and resettlement, and they include the presence of PSYOP officers to win over the support of the American people and, of course, to deal with dissidents. And this happens throughout history every time an oppressive power takes over. The Nazis, of course, didn't only come in with a strong military force. They first sent in what equates to PSYOP officers, psychological operators, who tried to win over public support. They offered children candy. They told them they were there to help. They did friendly public events. And we see this playing out again in American society, unfortunately, where national Guard military troops who aren't supposed to operate domestically are operating outside of their role but in benign ways at innocuous events to win over public support and this too has been accelerating just in recent weeks Alex has been to the Texas Independence Day celebration at Washington on the Brazos here in Texas National Guard troops were present to conduct and operate traffic he was at the Burger Center where National Guard and Texas Guard troops were operating I went to the kite festival this weekend and that footage is coming up in this report in just a few moments where the Texas State Guard were operating the shuttle buses. We've also seen the National Guard working with police at events like the Kentucky Derby and other special events, including even high school sporting events. The Kentucky National Guard was part of the massive security force required for this weekend's Kentucky Derby. Now the troops took care of crowd and traffic control, provided three choppers and crews for aviation support. All of this seems uh, not particularly alarming until you look at the fact that they're ramping up, they're conditioning the public to accept the military in domestic roles where they never should be operating. Again, none of this is against individual members of the military or guard units. In fact, many of them are waking up in greater numbers and at a faster rate than the general public. And of course, we need them on our side. But who gives the orders and who will control that structure in the event of a crisis? We just had on the Alex Jones radio show today, Philip Zimbardo, who ran the Stanford prison experiment and who played off the findings of the Milgram experiment, where they study how good people or ordinary people in society can do evil things when they're put in certain situations. Here now is footage from the 84th annual Austin Kite Festival where guard units are shuttling Americans onto buses just to get them back and forth from a friendly outdoor event. But ask yourself, what would happen if it wasn't a regular event, but if it was orders to send Americans to a FEMA camp? Happy children, families, couples, A sunny day in early spring, all over a park in Austin. This is the scene of the Austin Kite Festival, now in its 84th year. An iconic and idyllic scene of peace and recreation. What could be better? But outside of this festive atmosphere, which had clogged downtown traffic and brought normal activities on this happy weekend day to a halt, was a military presence. The Texas State Guard operating under the National Guard was running part of the event. They were invited there by the Austin Exchange Club and operated with the help of police, the shuttle buses bringing kite festival goers to and from the event. It was admittedly run as other training exercises are in preparation for natural disasters and other emergencies as coordinated by Homeland Security and FEMA, including this article posted on the Texas State Guard website. TXSG flies high with Austin Kite Festival, where they admit in part that festival organizers and participants gave the Texas State Guard soldiers real-world training for the kind of logistical support the organization provides during natural disasters and other emergencies. Quote, this gives us the opportunity to put our training and expertise into practical use in advance of our response to hurricanes, tornadoes, floods, or fires. The National Guard first appeared in 2012 at the Austin Kite Festival, provoking several news articles. The internet was ablaze with the account of the National Guard patrolling the Austin Kite Festival in 2012. But here in 2013, there was scant mention of the National Guard's presence other than just straightforward PR releases of how they would operate the buses and how they would carry passengers to and fro, conditioning the public to accept ever greater control in violation of posse comitatus to keep track and control of the people 
under any pretext they considered necessary. Homeland Security and FEMA have made big preparations, not only for natural disasters, but also for civil unrest or declared national emergencies. And their training exercises have routinely included the very functions that these National Guard members were carrying out during this kite festival, where they would line up the public and keep track of them as they were loaded onto buses. In 2011, InfoWars reporters traveled to Denver, Colorado to cover an exercise run by Homeland Security and FEMA, where various terror scenarios and school shooter scenarios prompted school buses to load children and take them to sports stadiums. Contingency plans for natural disasters and other emergencies have included in states like Texas and New Jersey RFID wristbands, where members of the population would be tracked and tagged upon entering buses and throughout their stay at emergency centers, like the one used by FEMA during Hurricane Katrina at the Superdome, where the public was not protected but instead subjected to a laboratory of martial law conditions. While there is no sign of this kind of disaster at the Austin Kite Festival, I guess it's good that military and police were there to keep order. I actually captured a very dangerous individual on this camera, seen here at a young age in a stroller using a terrorist weapon, the bubble gun. As Americans are interested in upholding the Constitution and protecting our individual and state rights, we have to ask ourselves why good military personnel and troops are being used to, quote, help in what seems like innocuous public events, festivals, sporting events. Well, they're trying to acclimate us to greater and greater military presence so that when the feds take over in what is a premeditated economic collapse, we'll accept them as our saviors and not think twice about going along with what is a total destruction of our American culture, society, and laws. Signing off for InfoWars.com.